Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about steady state analysis and in this example I would like to discuss a design example. We would like to design an RC circuit as shown here and we have the following data. So let's start. What is the situation? We have to design this circuit to produce the output voltage V out as shown here 2 cosine 1000 T minus 40 degrees when the input voltage V in is 10 cosine 1000 T. Again you see the same frequencies that is mandatory, 1000 radians per second for steady state analysis. And we see the 10 volts peak for the input voltage, 2 volts peak for the output voltage, and we have a phase orientation for the output voltage which is minus 40 degrees. The phase orientation of the input is zero. Okay, I would like to design the means R1, R2, and C. The values of that will, must be determined here from the, uh, from the given data. So what I first will do, that is the starting point for this analysis, for the design, I will first determine the transfer function. So let's first determine that. And from that we can determine the required component value. So the transfer function. So what is a transfer function? Transfer function means actually as the name implies, transfer from the input to the output. So how much I have transferred from the input to the output. And we will, that, we will do that in, in, in a ratio. So that means actually the output voltage divided by the input voltage. So how, what is the ratio? And that will be given in the frequency domain. You can do that in Laplace domain, you can do that in J omega domain, which you prefer. I will do it in Laplace domain, it will be, uh, it will be uh, also much more easy to read. So what I see is the following, I will use uh, the V out divided by V in, and I will use for that the voltage divided rule. So voltage divided rule says actually the following, the impedance seen by these two nodes, divided by the total impedance seen by the, uh, the voltage source we have applied here, V in, is actually your transfer. So if I now write down the following, if I have H of S, which is of course just the name for the transfer, the transfer function, is the V out in terms of S divided by V in. Now, if I want this expression, I can use the voltage divider rule. Then I have the impedance required, actually what's seen between these two points of the V out, which is this one. I will just call it something later on. And the total impedance for V in is R1 plus this impedance. So let me first uh, designate that, it will be handy later on. So if I now make this complete parallel combination Z1, then the expression here will be Z1 divided by R2 plus Z1. That's actually the voltage divider rule. It will be very handy when you develop your transfer function. So what is Z1? Now, Z1 is the parallel combination of these two uh, elements, so R2 and the capacitor. Of course, we make that in the last domain. And if you now write this out, it will be R2 times 1 over SC divided by R2 plus 1 over SC. Now, if you now simplify this, uh, multiply the denominator and the numerator by S times C, you will get R2 divided by 1 plus R2CS. Okay, now I will use this expression in here, and I will again simplify this if necessary, and I come up with the expression for the phase and the multiplication, and I can, I mean the the amplification, I can then calculate the required values for the component. So let's first substitute the values. So what is the expression for Z1 is what we already have is R2 divided by 1 plus R2 times C times S divided by R1 plus, again the same expression, R2 divided by 1 plus R2 times C times S. Again, I can make a simplification here, so I can multiply the denominator and the numerator by 1 plus R2CS. That will be, will give the following result, it will be R2 here on top, and will be R2 times 1 plus R2C, I mean R1, this one is R1, excuse me, the first one, so it will be R1 times in parentheses, 1 plus R2C times S, and it will give us the final R2 plus R2. If I now simplify this further, because I can have the R2 
still in on top but this one can be factored out so i will have r1 times this one and i have an r2 here so that will bring all the real parts together and then i have the following expression r2 divided by r1 plus r2 plus r1 times r2 times c times s so what you see is actually you have a real part and an imaginary part actually the s parameter part and you have the parameter on top that's actually our expression now you can do the uh, further uh, further uh, simplification which you can do is you can divide the numerator and denominator by r1 plus r1 plus r2 that will be handy when you want to know the dc game for example so let's do that also so it will be actually the following it will be r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times 1 over 1 plus because it is divided by the r1 plus r that will be 1 and you divide this whole term also by r1 plus r so you will have the following r1 times r2 times c divided by r1 plus r2 times c times s I mean, okay so we have the following expression for our transfer function this is the expression now we would like to transform so what i want i will do this use this because it is steady state s equate this to j omega so i have the following h of j omega will be r2 divided by r1 plus r2 this is a factor that doesn't change times 1 over 1 plus j omega i will bring the s in front so i will have the r1 times r2 times c divided by r1 plus r2 that's actually the expression for our transfer function now i would like to of course use the data here so for that i have the phases and i have also the multi uh, amplification so the amplification is 2 divided by 10 which is 1 over 5 and the phase difference is here minus 4d minus 0 it is actually minus 4d so i actually have the following i have a gain let me write it down i have a gain at the specific frequency will be 2 over 10 will be 1 over 5 and there's also a phase for this situation will be minus 40 degrees minus 0 degrees just make it complete and it will be minus 40 degrees so i will have to use these two data to come up for the values for r1 and r2 and of course the c so what is actually the expression for gain using this expression and what is actually the expression for the phase using this expression so it's actually also mandatory so let's first determine that what is the value of the gain that is actually the gain so it's actually the modulus so actually you take the amp amplitude you take the 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 amplitude of this one so it will be following the r2 divided by r1 plus r2 that's just a factor 1 over and you will use again your complex numbers theory 1 squared just stays 1 of course and then omega times r1 plus r2 divided by r1 r1 times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times c the whole term squared and for the phase this is the gain so let me make it clear this is the gain and for your phase you will need to do the following phase t phi of omega will be actually the phase or phase contribution by the by the top so part is actually just zero because it's just a real part and for this on the bottom we have actually the one plus j with a term that will be of course an expression with an arc tangent so it will be zero degrees for the top side for the expression minus the arc tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part so imaginary part is just g omega of course you don't take the j it's just an operator so omega times this expression completely divided by one will be will be of course again this so i will have the following omega times r1 times r2 times c divided by one r1 plus r2 okay now i have to now evaluate these two expressions at the specific frequency which is in this case 
1000 radians per second. So I will do that also. So I will have, and then equate that actually to the required values because these are the gain, these all, let me make this clear, this is all valid and only valid at omega is 1000 radian per second. For other uh, frequencies, we have different values for the gain and also for the phases. So I can only use it for this frequency. So if I do that, if I continue, I can substitute here 1000 for omega and also here, and I can develop the uh, equations. But I already see something before I continue. I have three unknowns. Of course, I already knew, knew that. So R1, R2, and C, and it's also shown here. But I have two, uh, two, two, uh, re two, uh, two required uh, values. So it's one over five and minus four degrees. So actually I need one more information to have a unique solution. So I have to choose something. One of the components I have to select it. So I have to select one of the components. I will select C is because the capacitor is uh, harder to select uh, compared to the resistors in practical form also. So I will have capacitor one, one microfarads. So I will just take that. It will be 10 to the power minus six farads. So I will use that and I will use omega is 1000 radians per second and I will develop the equations now. So what we have is the following. The H at 1000, the magnitude of that will be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and then 1 over and then square root of 1, 1 squared is just 1, plus this 1000 for omega times the R1 times R2 divided by the R1 plus R2 and times c, which is 10 to the power minus 6. We have ch chosen this, uh, this squared. And this must be 1 over 5. So what you see is actually we have now an expression. We have with two unknowns, R1 and R2 only, because we have selected the, capac uh, the capacity value. If I now do the same thing for the phase, so if I have now the phase also, the phi at 1000 radian per second must be, of course, this is simplified. Just You can just remove this. So it is minus our tangent one thousand times r one times r two divided by r one plus r two times c and that must be equal to minus forty degrees. That's actually for the second part. So what can we do? We can start actually with this uh, equation or this equation doesn't matter but this is a little bit simpler so what i want to do is the following i will calculate the expression r1 times r2 divided by the summation of these two resistors once i have this expression i will use this here and i have an expression for the r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so let's first move to this expression so let me first write down the 10 to power 3 times R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times 10 to the power minus 6. This is of course 10 to the power minus 6. And you have then the tangent of 4 degrees. So you move actually the minus signs left and right side and you make a tangent of the 40 degrees and you will lose arc tangent here that you will have following. And if you simplify this, you will have R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. It will give you, this expression will give you 900, 800, 39 ohms. This express, expression for this. I will now use this value here in this expression. So I will denote this as e equation number one. This as equation number two. And this is actually the expression number three. Now I will now do the following. Substitute. Substitute. Three. In one. So what do I get? I get the following. Let's move up. I have R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times one over the square root of 1 plus, now I have now again 1000 times, which is 800 
39 times 10 to the power minus 6 and whole term squared. So I will make this squared. And this must be again 1 over 5. What you see is actually the following. This is just a, this is just a number. So I have now R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Just the expression for that. So if I now do the math here, you will have R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which will result in the value of 0 0.261. That's actually for your expression here. And if you now use this, I will make this equation number 4. What I do is following. I can now see this expression also here, which is actually R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if I now write down actually the equation number three as follows, I can write it down as follows. R, let me continue with blue, R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is exactly the same as what we have for uh, expression three, will be 839. And this one, this expression, is just this. So if I now move to the next part, it will be R1 times 0.261, which is an expression, is equal to 839. And if I now calculate R1 from here, it will be R1 is equal to 839 divided by 0.261. And that will give us the value for R1. So that is, R1 is now here 3,215 ohms. Now, once I know R1, I can calculate R2 also really easily. How? I can use this, this expression. So I can use equation number 4, and I'm actually almost done. So I can use the following. Then, R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is equal to 0.261. If I now simplify this, it will be R1 plus R2 is equal to, and you do the following, you do R2 divided by the 0.261, which will give you 3.83 times R2. If you simplify this further, you will have R1 is equal to 2.83 times R2. I would like to go to R2, of course, so R2 is then equal to R1 divided by 2.83. If you now substitute the values, I will show it in black, it will be R1 I already have calculated. This is 3215 divided by 2.83. Now, if you now do the math here again, you will have 1136. And I have now all of the components. So I have to see, just select it, of course, with this one microfarads. From that, I have calculated using the phase, uh, the expression for the phase. I have the value of R1, which is this one, and I have calculated the value of R2 from that. That is actually the whole design example for this RC circuit. So I will see you next time with the other examples and other design examples, so keep in touch, and I'll see you next time.